Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. The big headline from the twin verdicts today is that it's a huge positive for the BGP. Now you might say, why positive? Because BGP has won Haryana and lost JNK. I'll explain to you. Because there is redemption in victory and vindication in defeat. How does it work? Let's explain. Redemption first. Haryana was the BGP's first test in its strongholds after the setback in June. It was widely expected by both its friends and foes that the party would find it impossible to win a successive third term, particularly because in the second term, already it had failed to get a majority in 2019. The BJP itself had hedged by not exposing Narendra Modi as the face of the campaign. A loss in Haryana would push it downhill from the edge where it was caught after last summer's general elections. Those elections, those results had left the BJP on the edge, edge of a downhill journey. Haryana would have pushed in that, in that direction if it had lost Haryana. The resounding Haryana win, on the other hand, changes all of that. That's redemption from the lows of June. That's why we said there is redemption in victory. It gives the leadership and the cadre of the BJP new energy and washes away negativity of June 2024. If you know this BJP, it will now go forward to Jharkhand and Maharashtra as if June 2024 never happened. Here we list our three key takeaways from the BJP's remarkable victory. Number one, a leader's popularity and charisma are a huge plus, but never underestimate the power of the boring old things like the craft, the science and engineering in a campaign. Haryana is the reward for the BJP's brilliance at it. See the number of independents fielded in most of the constituencies. Vinesh Fogart won in the end after a scare, but many others did not. These were very tight elections. In addition, check out the small coalitions, the senior Chotala's INLD, Indian National Lokdal with Mayavati and the JJP, Jananayak. Janata Party, led by, led by junior Chotala Dushant with rising Dalit star Chandrasekhar Azad. Any votes these unlikely Jat Dalit coalitions got in a tight contest were, of, were at the Congress's cost. The BJP applied the lessons of its Uttar Pradesh Lok Sabha debacle in Haryana because that's where Dalit vote had also shifted to its opposition. And that combined with Yadavs, Muslims, some OBCs that lost the BJP many seats. So they were applying those lessons here. Point number two, how do you win an election when the dominant and the most numerous caste group is against you, is firmly against you? First, divide this group among your rivals and then consolidate the rest because the rest will always be more. The BJP discounted its weakness and concentrated on its strengths, upper castes, Punjabis and now the OBCs. That's why that change in leadership just before Lok Sabha elections from Punjabi Manoharlal Khattar to OBC Nayab Singh Saini turned out to be decisive because the Punjabi vote, Punjabi vote is mostly urban. The BJP could take that for granted, but not the OBC vote. Now Nayab Singh Saini became that magnet for the OBC vote. It is the most unassailable wisdom that the dominant groups, any caste group or religious group, that dominant groups are feared and detested by the rest. The important thing in Haryana is that while the Jats often demand OBC status, they are for all practical purposes the highest caste in the state. Forget Manusmriti. It's as if 22% of Bihar was Brahmin. Can you imagine? That's how it is with the Jats in Haryana. The rest would resent them greatly. By getting that right, the BGP turned its weakness into a strength. And the third takeaway from the BJP's victory? The return of the RSS. In my travels through Haryana, BJP candidates spoke with breathless excitement of how the Sangh was back in the campaign now. Its indifference in the last summer elections had cost the party too much and it cost the RSS too much and now it was going to stop this 
hemorrhage. The change was captured in great detail by Sanya Dhingra of the print in a story published on 3rd October, two days before the polling. I am sharing a link with you with the description of this video. Please check it out. If all is forgiven between this BJP and the RSS, then June can be forgotten and politics can begin afresh. That's what's happening now. And what does the Congress take away from all of this? Here are, here are the three factors or three takeaways we list from the Congress's defeat in Haryana. Number one, the tips of the Congress campaign, the three tips of the Congress campaign were Kisan, Jawan, Pehlwan. The, the farmers were furious over MSP, the soldiers and ex-servicemen over Agnipath, or that was the presumption, and the wrestlers over the Bridgebushan Sharan Singh story, topped by Vinesh Fogart's tragic Paris disqualification. So far, so good. Except the Congress forgot that all three add up to, in popular, in popular belief, all three add up to just one caste in Haryana, Jats. The campaign became Jats centric and Jat land centric and helped the BJP consolidate others. The party's leading Dalit face, Kumari Selja, was vocally disenchanted. She still is and speaking out now. The farcical entry of serial defector and supposed Dalit leader Ashok Tamar about three hours before the close of the campaign confused everybody. These are the perils of declaring victory too early. Number two takeaway from the Congress's defeat. The Congress thinks it holds sway over the villages while the BJP owns the cities. That it's a rural versus urban divide between them and the BJP. It's always been wrong about both. First of all, a state like Haryana, so close to Delhi, and so well connected, it's impossible to divide into rural and urban as you might do in Bimaru states. Haryana is even more urban than Gujarat. Just think about it. In three directions, it borders Delhi. On another side, it has Chandigarh. So this is a very urban, flat state. Even in the 2014 writings on the wall, of which I will share a link with you with the description, I had noted air conditioners sticking out of the windows of almost every other house in Haryana's villages. Now we are in 2024, so there must be many more houses with air conditioners. Both descriptions the Congress thrives on, rural and agrarian, no longer fit Haryana's big picture. Nor does the stereotype of all Haryanvis being jats or pehlwans or boxers. The Congress further blundered in making its proposition entirely transactional. Free this, free that. There was no promise of a big new thing. A leap up the value chain for Haryana and the Haryanvis. The only product differentiation seemed to be that it had the jats, that Congress had the jats and the BJP did not. The third takeaway or the third point is what the Congress will find the most difficult to accept. That in large parts of the country, people will not vote against Ambani or Adani. India isn't JNU for heaven's sake. Aspirational voter is a tired expression by now. But so is the supposed capitalist excess or the story of capitalist excess. In, in many parts of the country, Haryana in particular, successful entrepreneurs are seen as role models, not rapacious thugs and capitalism is not necessarily a ba bad thing. They just want these same industrialists, entrepreneurs to invest more in their state and create jobs. However fertile Haryana's lands may be for all kinds of crops, they totally reject the seed of old JNU style leftism. The Congress showed phenomenal political misjudgment in hoping to plant the same seed in Haryana. It would have been much better off promising three more Gurugrams, another knowledge city, an IT park only for AI, semiconductor and mobile phone manufacturing. The povertarian condemnation of Ambani Adani left people bemused when they needed optimism, optimism, optimism. Both sides will take their lessons to Jharkhand and Maharashtra, but now instead of the BJP, the Congress will begin afresh as a loser. And what about the defeat, the BJP's defeat in Jammu and Kashmir? Of course, the BJP would have liked to win and rule the state and ideally with the Hindu chief minister, something it has dreamed, dreamed of forever. That did not happen. But see what it achieved on the other hand. First, all political parties, including so many former separatists, Engineer Rashid, in fact, on furlough for his party, all of them contested under the post 
5th August 2019 arrangement. Nothing better than this 63.88% voter turnout to sanctify such a big constitutional change. Second, the election was completely peaceful, underlining the changed popular mood and also enhanced state capacity. And third, nobody would say this election wasn't fair. That the BJP lost this election so resoundingly is the best evidence that this was a fair election. This is why there is vindication for the BJP even in defeat here.